First of all, thank you for clicking on this video. This is my first one, so I really appreciate it. And if you enjoy, then consider subscribing. I'll be making weekly Sea of Thieves content. So, enjoy the video. Alright, so in today's video, we're going to be talking about solo slooping tips and tricks and how you can get better at sailing on your own in Sea of Thieves. I'm going to start the video by talking about the sloop itself and then go on to talking about kind of the tips and tricks. So if you already know about the ship and you have a basic idea about Sea of Thieves, you could skip forward to this timestamp here, I'll put it in the middle of the screen, and there we'll start talking about the tips and tricks and maybe some things you don't know. Okay, so starting with the ship, the sloop is the smallest ship in Sea of Thieves. You've got three types of ship. You've got the sloop, the brig, and the galleon. The sloop is the smallest, the galleon's the biggest, and then the brig's kind of in the middle. Although this does not mean the sloop is worst, so don't be put off picking the sloop when you start. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's worse. We'll get into that more later on about the advantages that the sloop has, so stick around for that. So, the sloop is the smallest ship in terms of what well, size. It has two cannons, one capstan with two pegs, which are the bits that stick out from the side. I'm just going to call them pegs. I don't know if that's their actual name. You've also got one mast and two individual ropes to control the mast. So two ones to control the sail length and two to control the angle. You also spawn with 40 cannonballs, 16 bananas and 15 planks when you spawn into the outpost, which I believe is the lowest. It's definitely lower than the galleon, might not be lower than the brig. However, there is a way to get around this and we'll go into that in the tips and tricks section. So stay around for when we start talking about that. So the sloop has a max of two players that you can play with it on. Uh, two players is actually a really good level to play with the sloop on, but it is by far the best ship to play with one player on. If, yeah, don't you? there's no other ship. Maybe even you could do brig, a solo brig. I might do a video in the future talking about how you can solo brig. If you'd be interested in that, leave a comment letting me know. The galleon you definitely can't solo on. Definitely the sloop is the best one to solo on. So it does have robo access as well. You can pull a robo up on the back. And where it opens out on the second deck at the back of the ship, you can just behind the map table, you can jump onto the rowboat from there. So, yeah, basically, like all the other ships, you do get access to a rowboat. So, now some of the tips and tricks for more experienced players, maybe, and of course, new players as well. They'll help everyone. So, the first one is that the sloop is not the slowest ship in the game, it is the slowest going with the wind. If you're going with the wind and you're being chased by a galleon, who's also going with the wind, the galleon will catch you up very quickly. However, it's the fastest ship going into the wind, meaning that if you're being chased by a brig or a galleon, you can just turn the ship into the wind and you will actually start gaining away from them and you'll be able to escape them. And most of the time, you just can keep sailing off until they give up unless they chase you right into the shroud and then wait for you to sink which has happened to me before i've had a persistent reaper just follow me for ages in which case we just had to turn around and fight them the ship is also the most maneuverable meaning it's the easiest to turn and you can make quick turns and stuff like that basically the most agile ship therefore you can use this kind of to outrun a ship by using rocks you can go through a good thing to do is if you're being chased by a galleon you can steer through some rocks come out one way Maybe just steer through them and then come out the way you came in, try and confuse them. You can also, of course, do handbrake turns. So this is where you drop the anchor using the capstan and spin the wheel hard right or left. So that will just spin you around about 180 degrees to the other direction. And then you can raise the anchor again and go forward. This gives you the advantage of if you're being chased, you can just quickly spin around and face the other direction. And the galleon's going to take a lot longer to turn around or the brig to turn around and get going in that direction as well. In fact, you'll probably be already going off into the distance, well, not that far, but you'll already be gaining on them by the time they're about halfway through their turn. So, yeah, and that's if they notice that you're going to spin around early. It's definitely a good way that you can get away from somebody is by spinning around quickly. It also means if you're in a gunfight, you can turn away from the cannons and find an area where they can't hit you before they can basically turn the ship to face the cannons to you. So this gives you a big advantage. If you do happen to get in a gunfight, which I wouldn't recommend, especially with a galleon, but unless you're more experienced, I'll go into that later, then the tips and tricks for getting into that fight is to find a spot where they can't hit you with the cannons, but you can easily hit them with yours. A way of doing this is to get right up close to them. Basically, if you're basically on top of them and you're right next to them, their cannons will just fire over you and you can just keep hitting them with cannon shots. This does come with a disadvantage, though. The fact that they can board your ship because you're that close, they can literally just jump on. And also, they could probably hit your mast with a chain shot 
if you're not careful. So if you pull up close, probably pull up, fire some cannons, and then pull away pretty quickly because you don't want to be hanging around there for a long time. And you also want to hit your shots low on the galleons or the brigs. That's a good, that's a tip. Yep, that's, yep, you should, yep. Okay, <laughs> next. So the next thing is you're smaller, so you are harder to hit. If you imagine you've got, you know, you're on a cannon and you're trying to hit a galleon, it's easier to hit than if there's a little sloop in front of you. There's more chance that you'll go over it. Whereas on the galleon, you'd probably just hit their second deck. This does come with a disadvantage in the fact that quite a lot of the hits that are going to hit you will probably be below deck hits because most of the kind of hit area is below the deck. And what that means is if you're hit, you'll likely start filling up with water. Unless the second deck of the sloop doesn't sometimes, but it, it can. I've seen it start filling up with water from that deck as well. So basically, if you get hit, you're probably going to start filling up, which is a disadvantage. But then again, it's harder to hit. And also with the sloop, the waves can sometimes be so high that you can't even see kind of the deck of the sloop, which is an advantage. I think I had a clip earlier in this video where you might be able to see it with the skeleton sloop. It goes down underwater, kind of almost looks like it's underwater. So go back and watch that if you want to see an example. If it wasn't included earlier, I'll include a clip of it here. But yeah, you are harder to hit, but you are probably going to fill up if you're hit. However, that's not all bad, because you'll actually take more hits to sink than the brig. The reason for this, the brig has one deck, meaning that for the water to fill up to the top the top deck level and the top of those stairs, it takes a lot less holes and a lot less water to do that. For you, you sink when the water reaches about level with a map table, so you do have a little bit more water that you can take in before you sink. So you do have the advantage over the brig in that case. So if if you are getting in a fight, you can pretty safely get into a fight with a brig, I think. So you do have that big advantage uh, over over the brig. So that's kind of a bit about the advantage of the ship. But in terms of getting gold and money, it can be harder, definitely harder, as a solo slooper. See if this kind of built around this multiplayer experience. Most of the things you do in the game, you can see, have some effects of the multiplayer, if that makes sense. That's why the captain has multiple different rigs. Uh, I called them something else at the start, but sticks coming out of them because multiple people can pull it round. So with that, it could be harder to make progress and get loot and gold and everything. But a way you can avoid this and get around this is by joining alliances. This gives you a big advantage because you get a cut of what everyone else is selling. So if you joined an alliance with another crew and they went and sold a skull, you would get a percentage of the money that they sold it for. So say they got 2,000, you'd get, I don't know, 1,000 something? I'm not really sure how it works, but I'll put a percentage up on the screen about how much percent you get. It does also, if you're an alliance, it doesn't affect you at all. Like, you don't lose any money for selling stuff. You just give the bonus to somebody else. And as an alliance, you can kind of share all that gold around you. Because it is a lot harder. If you think about it, a galleon could just go to a fort, complete it with four players in about 30 minutes and sell the stuff it's going to take you probably this is all based off the fact that you're not an experienced player but it'll probably take you quite a bit longer to beat that fort and get away with all the loot than it would a galleon therefore a galleon can kind of get loot much quicker sell loot quicker they can do more in a session than you can on a solo sloop normally so that's why alliance is going to help you out in that aspect they're going to get you reputation more gold so yeah definitely do that but be careful who you're joining an alliance with. Make sure you check them, check with them before. You can do this using the trumpet like I do, just did in this clip. And that, yeah, that will give you the bonus that you know whether they're friendly or not. Don't just pull up next to their ship because they might try and sink you, especially if it's a galleon. Although if they've already got the alliance flag up, then you could probably approach them. That's fine. And I would recommend when you get in, you put up your alliance flag. So one of the final tips for this video is how to avoid having low resources. I think when you spawn in, you get a very low amount. So to avoid this, it's quite easy. You will spawn on an outpost, and when you spawn, just go around to all the barrels on the outpost and collect some other stuff. This gives you an advantage because you... In fact, I did this the other day while my friend was updating the game. Went around the outpost and pretty much doubled our supplies. I, I did loot every single barrel. But if you just do half the barrels on the outpost, maybe just say, oh... Before I go off, I'll spend five minutes just opening barrels and stocking up my ship. You can get quite a bit more but resources, and it'll give you a good start. Because the worst thing that can happen is you get in a situation where you get attacked by a ship, and you run out of wood because 
as a solo person, you can't kind of just have someone running up and down bailing water while you try and get somewhere with wood. So what you can do with two players or three or four players, if you're without wood, you can just constantly bail the water out. But that doesn't work, obviously, with one player. So you need to make sure that you keep your resources up. If you don't want to go round outpost at the start, when you go to your islands for your voyages or when you go to the outpost to sell your stuff or whether you're going to a fort, whatever you're doing, there's barrels everywhere pretty much. Very few islands have like one barrel. Most of them will have a few barrels. So if you just check through all of them, you, you'll you be bound to find enough wood to stock up. So just keep stocking up when you're going to the islands. Basically, if you just dump all your inventory before you go and then fill it up while you're there, each island you go to, you'll be gaining more resources as well. So if you do get in a fight or something like that, you'll be able to keep enough resources. So I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. If you've got any more tips and tricks that you know that could help other people out, put them in the description. I might do updated videos in the future. But for now, this is the best way to kind of, I think, to take advantage of the sloop and being in a that smaller position. Because a lot of other ships will come and try to attack you because you're smaller mostly. So yeah, you probably will get attacked, especially by kind of these crews that don't know all the secrets about the sloop. But yeah. So you are more at risk from some certain crews. And if you see someone trying to attack you or get close to you, then you can just turn into the wind and move away. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, I'm going to make weekly videos. So subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. This is my first one. So, yep. And don't forget to comment down below if you've got any other tips, tricks, what else you want to see me do. I could do a solo brig video. I could do other tips and tricks. Some funny moments videos. But yeah, comment down below. Do all that stuff. Hope you enjoyed. And hope you learned something. See ya.